And from there, I think, uh, I mean, as I say, I was always surrounded by art, but I, I was a painter um, as, as, a, as a child, as a teenager, but I realized I wasn't very good. <laughs> so I thought I was better at writing, um, and I really started to, to focus on writing in my late teens, early 20s. Um, and that was when I went to Cambridge, uh, did my undergrad there, Oxford did my PhD um, there, and really started to think about you know, possible career as a curator. Um, academia was something I was interested in, um, but uh, I loved uh, the idea of actually being close to art objects. Uh, and that was why uh, I sort of gravitated more towards um, the curatorial uh, domain. Um, so I moved to uh, America actually in 2001. I, I, as I said, I was brought up just outside of London um, and uh, you know, studied in Oxford until, uh, PhD in Oxford until 2001. Um, but there were so many opportunities in America. Um, I came to the Met, as I say, in 2001. Um, and, you know, enjoyed my time there. And then came to St. Louis. Came to St. Louis in 2010. Um, and I've been here for, you know, for several years now. Um, and it's been a great space. It's been an opportunity uh, to really work closely with a wonderful collection. Uh, in many ways, my English accent has been my my best job, I don't know, <laughs> sort of the thing which helps me best in my job, people love English accents in, in St. Louis. Um, but it's, it's been a good space for actually you know, developing uh, shows and, and really working with what is a wonderful collection. Um, and I think you know, that's another thing that I think about, you know, what is a curator? I mean, that's something that I get asked too, alongside why I became a curator. And, uh, if you look up the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, a curator is somebody who actually um, superintends or cares for a collection, uh, and that's always been you know, important for me. We have a wonderful collection at the St. Louis Art Museum, um, really ranging from, uh, in my area, you know, from early, early Romantic art of the early 19th century, right through Max Beckman up to contemporary uh, American and German art. So working with uh, that collection has always been uh, an enticement. I think, um, you know, in terms of uh, curating, another important element is, is exhibitions, and that's always been key for me, um, organising uh, and curating uh, shows which are hopefully thought-provoking, and, you know, really maybe introduce some art to, uh, uh, to people in St. Louis who wouldn't know, um, you know, the kind of artists that I've been showing, um, and really make people think, you know, think what, is, what does art mean, um, what, um, you know, sort of pushing the boundaries a little bit of what art can be. Uh, so what I'm going to do today um, is, is show uh, three exhibitions that I've worked on recently. Um, and they're kind of an interesting range, but they're, they're shows that highlight the idea of kind of wonder. I'm interested in the idea of art actually creating wonder. I think that's what it should do. It should provoke you. You know, the, most of the art I show is avant-garde, which is experimental. It's, it's, it's sort of you know, often breaks away from tradition, but it should also invoke a sense of wonder. Um, so let's start with uh, this show here, um, which uh, we showed last year at St. Louis Art Museum, which is a, an exhibition by the artist Kinder Wiley. Um, so Kinder Wiley is an extremely prominent uh, American painter. Um, he is, uh, you know, somebody who's you know, worked with a whole number of museums, um, and I think for us, he was particularly interested in working in St. Louis post-Ferguson, you know, post-2014, what had happened here, and thinking of St. Louis as a kind of nexus for the wider tensions which one is experiencing in America um, really at this moment. Um, so he produced a, a body of 11 uh, new paintings for us, um, and they're a group of, uh, of works which were inspired by models that he met um, around uh, North St. Louis and Ferguson. Uh, this gives you an idea of the, um, this is one of the exhibition uh, installation shots. This is when it's looking a bit more busy, which is always better, you want more, more people in the galleries. Um, but the show has been, you know, has been phenomenally popular, uh, it's attracted a lot of interest. And part of that is linked to the fact that um, we didn't know this, you know, when we were developing the show with Behinder, this goes back to, you know, 2014, 2015. But since that time, he was commissioned um, to do this portrait of Barack Obama, um, former President Obama, 
and that really raised the level of, of you know, Kenza's recognition uh, nationally and internationally. It really helped us in terms of our show. Um, so that was, you know, that was an important moment for our show also. And then um, this is probably my favourite uh, work uh, in the exhibition on the left. Uh, this is a, a painting called Charles the um, First, and there's a kind of interesting backstory here. Uh, so when you know when King came to St. Louis in the summer of 2017, he was uh, he was interested in doing these what, what he calls street casting. Um, so we went out to, to North St. Louis and Ferguson, and basically he goes up to people on the street. Uh, and asked if they're interested in, in being the models for his paintings. Um, and Ashley Cooper, who you see here, uh, was one of uh, the models. She was, she was just like getting a pizza in Four Caesars. She didn't, wasn't expecting to ever be in a painting. Um, but she was getting her pizza, and, and Kinder and his team you know, literally, literally started speaking to her. Um, and she thought it was a joke. She didn't think that this was a, you know, a, a real thing. Um, but it was. And the next day, um, you know, she came to the St. Louis Art Museum. We did a photo shoot, um, and you know, she was shot in a way which uh, sort of mimics the pose of a painting in our collection. So that's something that Kinder is always interested in, kind of dialoguing with old masters uh, and thinking about the ways in which contemporary art can interact with art historical tradition, and also thinking about the lack of black representation in art historical tradition. Um, so you see, what you see in this painting here is a reworking of uh, the Charles, Charles I painting from the early, early 17th century, but completely reworked uh, and with um, Ashley, Ashley Cooper in, in her, you know, the, the sort of normal dress that she wears. Um, and the really kind of interesting um, sort of context, you know, Gehinder often works with these wallpapers, these are 19th century uh, era wallpapers um, and the light. The light is so beautiful in this painting. Um, you look at the there's kind of an inner, inner light uh, to the way he paints. He, he sort of builds up his glazes uh, over over time, and even the light uh, just around here uh, on on the right of, of Ashley is I think very beautiful. Um, so I think you know this was a. a an interesting project for us. I think another thing that Kehinder has talked about is that in works like this, they're almost kind of sacred. You know, taking a tradition of religious painting. And if you look carefully here, you can see that she's kind of wearing a halo uh, with the roses that, uh, that surround her head. Um, so kind of, you know, thinking about these traditions and thinking about how they connect with contemporary St. Louisans. And the show's been a great success with a whole range of, uh, of audiences. And I wanted to show you this image because this is, you know, we've had a lot of high schools and, you know, younger, you know, younger kids coming and just really engaging in a really wonderful way uh, with Kahinza's paintings. I'm really looking at them closely because they do reward close looking. Um, the kid at the front kind of looks a bit bored, <laughs> but I think the others do look, you know, you can see they're looking closely uh, at the work. A uh, second exhibit that I've, I've worked on uh, in recent years is, is, is a different thing, but it's also an artist who's kind of pushing boundaries. Uh, this is Degas Impressionism in the Paris Millinery Trade. Edgar Degas is a really prominent Impressionist uh, painter. Um, you tend to think of him more of a, as a kind of painter or sculpture of dancers, but what <coughs> I wanted to do in this show was kind of showcase another area in his work which is not so well known, and that's his representation of milliners. Um, so this was a key painting to the show, and this was bought by the St. Louis Art Museum in 2007. It cost us $2 million, uh, $10 million, rather, um, but it's a, you know, a, a crucial work, and, and the show is kind of built around uh, this painting. And it shows uh, milliners who are creating a hat, uh, and really showing them as focused artists. And that was important for, uh, for Edgar Degas. So... You know, part of the novelty of this show uh, was not just showing Dugas work, but it was also showing hats. Uh, we have about 40 hats in the show, and we wanted to kind of think about the women who made the hats as artists in their own right. Um, so if you could, you know, sort of transport yourself in time and go back to the exhibition, um, this was a, um, an installation show, and you see the whole kind of range of hats that we had in one of the galleries. Um, you know, these are incredible hats, just in terms of their, their technique and their sort of facility of making. 
This one here, which is a geranium hat, was actually seen as so naturalistic that somebody actually tried to water it. And then this one here is even more bizarre in a way. I mean, there was a massive you know, trade. Everyone wore a hat at that time in the late 19th, early 20th century. Um, but a lot of people wore hats with you know, bird carcasses on them. And this was a history that we kind of wanted to recreate uh, for, for this exhibition. You know, today it's a little bit problematic um, because of the ecological uh, questions that it raises, but it's a historical, um, you know, it's a hi historical fact. So this here is an Af African starling um, that came from West Africa and really almost seems to be flying off the hat. And then again, this kind of idea of trying to bring uh, the, the period to life. Uh, so we uh, created this um, this space, which has a, a photograph of a hat, of a hat shop uh, from the early 20th century in Paris. Uh, you could sit here, you, could, you have the hat boxes around you, and you can kind of imagine yourself being transported back to that space. So this is uh, the third, uh, a third exhibition that I've worked on recently, which is the work of a, a British artist called Rachel Whiteread. Uh, somewhat bizarrely, she grew up around five miles away from me uh, in Essex, just east of London. Um, her work is probably a little more difficult than the two artists I just showed, Kinder Wiley and Edgar Duggar, but it really questions the idea of what, you know, what sculpture can be. I think you know, traditionally we probably think that sculpture is um, probably either in bronze or marble and you know, maybe sits on a pedestal. Uh, but in Rachel's work, uh, she uses a whole range of materials, and her work almost invariably sits on the floor. Um, so what you see here um, is a, a sculpture called Untitled 25 Spaces. What it is, is a resin sculpture, which is essentially a sculpture of negative space. It's a space which is um, underneath chairs, actually. Um, so what, what she's doing here, and this is part of her originality, is that she's making the invisible visible. Um, she's giving, you know, giving form to a space that is essentially air. Uh, this is a kind of similar idea here. Uh, this is a, a sculpture called Shallow Breath. Uh, her sculpture, it, it taps into a minimalist tradition, uh, but it adds layers of personal meaning and emotion. And this sculpture here is called Shallow Breath, uh, and it's, it seems like a mattress, but it's actually the... Uh, the, the the sculpture of the negative space, or the cast of the negative space under a mattress. Um, and this was made around the time that her father was dying, so it has very kind of personal emotion for her. Uh, this is a piece called Line Up. Um, you know, her later work, is, it starts to get more and more colorful. And these are essentially the, just a cast of toilet rolls. Um, so again, you know, thinking about the importance of domestic objects for her, and these are objects that I think we can all relate to, um, and I think that's part of the resonance, the kind of strength of, of, of our exhibition. This is a show, it's on at the St. Louis Art Museum at the moment. And this is one of my favourite works in the show. Um, it's a, a sculpture, one of the most recent um, sculptures from 2016, which is essentially the cast resin uh, sculpture of doors. And we think of doors that sort of close off, uh, separate spaces, uh, but in the case of, of Rachel's uh, work here, this is a translucent space. You know, she's thinking about doors in a different way. Um, and again, this is a space just outside the door. It's a negative space actually around the door rather than the door itself. Um, so I think it kind of makes you question what sculpture can be. Um, and it really makes you think about you know, your houses, the sort of domestic world in which you live uh, in a different way. Um, we... Uh, try to you know, acquire work as much as possible at the museum. This was a, a sculpture we acquired in 20, uh, 2017. It's called Detach 3. Uh, it's a sculpture by Rachel Whiteread, which is essentially the cast of the interior of a shed. So we call it the shed for our sculpture garden. Um, but it's, in, in her words, mummifying the air uh, within a uh, space. Um, and this one is in concrete. You know, other, other works are in wax, in dental plaster, in resin. Uh, this, one's happen this one happens to be in concrete. Um, and it's situated within uh, the wider context of uh, our sculpture garden. This is a space that we uh, opened in, in 2015. It's an important complement to our uh, contemporary um, uh, building, which was opened in 2013, and also to uh, the original Pearls Arts building. Um, it's a kind of uh, you know, important space, and this is a sculpture uh, by Matthias Gasteiger. 
one of the things you have to do as a curator is not actually, not only curate um, uh, exhibitions and uh, uh, I guess, you know, try to acquire works for the collection, but also act as models for sculptures. Um, so here is me um, actually acting as a, as a model for this um, sculpture because we didn't, you know, the, the people who were installing it didn't exactly know the way uh, that it should be installed. So, so there I am standing on the plinth um, showing the way in which this, uh, this sculpture should be, should be installed. Um, I didn't have to go naked, luckily, so I had to go naked. Uh, but this is, a, this is a sculpture called Hercules and the Hydra, um, which is an you know, important sculpture by a relatively little-known artist called Matthias Gasteiger. And then, um, to sort of tie it back to the theme of wonder, uh, because you know, all the artists that I've shown so far, um, you know, Wiley, Wiley's work has really invoked a, a, a genuine sense of wonder from, from visitors who love the, the sort of complexity of his, his formula uh, processes. Uh, the Dugas show, I think people loved the, um, just the hats and just were surprised at how complex and beautiful those were. And then in terms of Rachel Wiley's work, I think the, 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 just the, the, the sort of difference of the, the surfaces and the materials and the resins, etc., the color, is something that's also invoked, uh, invoked wonder. Um, and I wanted to, you know, just to finish up, to tie this back to, I guess, my personal story. I talked at the beginning about my interest in art as going back to really my father and the fact that he was a painter and, and um, you know, being taken to, to art exhibitions as a child. So I have a three-year-old daughter, uh, and recently I took her to the St. Louis Art Museum to see this painting, or actually not to see this painting, to see the museum collection, but she particularly gravitated to this painting. Uh, it's a work by Ellsworth Kelly, it's called Spectrum II, um, and it's a very complex work, um, and it's you know, sort of questioning the idea of what the spectrum can be. But for my daughter, it was just a work of wonder. Her eyes just got very big um, when she saw the work, and she called it a rainbow painting. And I love that. And I think that, um, you know, and I hope that for, for me, for all of us, we can sort of keep a sense of wonder and innocence in the way that we look at art. And I think that as a curator, if I can manage to facilitate that, that idea of wonder uh, in, in any kind of way, then I think my job will have been successful. Thank you.